In this lesson, I'll teach you how to utilize brush expressions in your digital art application. Brush expressions link your physical input to the brush properties. For example, an expression could be pen pressure. You can press down firmly with your pen, or you can draw very lightly. The tilt or rotation of the pen can also be an expression. You can utilize one or more expressions to manipulate the shape, appearance, and behavior of your brushes along a stroke. Many of the brushes in your art application already have one or more expressions applied. Most commonly, size will be controlled by pen pressure. Expressions enhance the experience of working with digital art tools by enabling you to make more expressive marks on the canvas. Not only does it feel more natural to work this way, expressions can also help brush strokes look more natural as well. There are even expressions that randomize properties to create unique effects. In order to use an expression, you'll need to choose a brush and a brush property to manipulate. I'll choose a round hard edge brush. Expressions can be found in the brush editor next to the properties they relate to. For this brush, I'll link the size property to the pressure expression. Now if I make a bigger brush and start drawing with very light pressure, I'll get a very thin line. As I start to increase my pressure, you can see the line gets wider. Let's turn that expression off and see what happens. To do that, you might need to unlink it from the size property or modify the expression curves. In Rebel, I'll need to disable pressure by dragging the dots in the graph up to the top to fill the square with blue. I'll explain how the graph works shortly. Now, regardless of how firmly I am pressing, the line is a consistent width. The size is no longer controlled by an expression. Let's return to the size curve editor and reset the curve to the default, which is linear for this type of brush. That's a straight line going from the bottom left to the top right. I can add points to this curve by clicking on it. I'll add one point in the middle of the line and move it to the right. To remove points, select them and then press either backspace or delete. In some art applications, you'll need to drag the points to the outside of the graph to remove them. Now you can see that the graph shows a curve. This means that I have custom calibrated the pressure of this brush so that the lower end of the pressure range is less sensitive. To make sense of this graph, let's break it down. First, the horizontal axis of the grid represents pressure from low to high. The vertical axis shows the brush size from small to large. Currently, this graph shows that if I press my lightest, I will get my smallest brush size, which is approximately one pixel wide. If I press my hardest, I will get my largest brush size, which is defined by the size property value. A lower size value means the maximum brush size will be smaller. If I make it a larger value, then my brush can be larger. Because of the curve I set, if I use medium pressure, then I will get a slightly smaller brush than if I had left the pressure set to linear. This graph also shows the rate at which the brush size responds to pen pressure input. The size doesn't enlarge much when I use low pressure, but then later, around medium low pressure, size begins to grow and then slopes linearly to become its largest at the heavy end of pressure. In practical terms, I tend to press firmly, so this pressure curve allows me to have more control over the lighter end of pressure. For this particular brush, I use light pressure to taper the lines and create hatching effects. But because I don't use the lightest pressure my pen can detect, I've chosen to eliminate it and just have size increase when I am pressing at what I feel is my lightest. If I make the curve convex, that will make the size respond earlier to low pressure. Now you can see that I have more difficulty getting very thin lines and smooth transitions in width. I have to press very lightly, which doesn't feel natural to me. To someone else, it might feel perfect, so feel free to adjust these settings to suit your preference. There is also a global pressure calibration setting that precedes the effects in your art application, so you might check that setting if it feels difficult to control your pen pressure. I have a reference video showing how to do that. If you clip the points on the graph, then you will also reduce the input and output range for that expression. For example, if I bring my lowest pressure point to the middle of the graph, my pen will not apply any paint until I use medium pressure and then it'll begin to grow. If I bring the maximum pressure point to the left, then maximum pressure will be reached before I'm using my heaviest pressure. This has reduced my overall range of pressure input for this brush. So if my drawing tablet and pen support up to 2000 pressure levels, I am only able to draw with less than that when using this curve. Likewise, you can also clip the output or the properties affected by the expression. If I remove the curve by setting everything to high, 
Then I have eliminated both the pressure range and the size range, and I will just get a solid line. This is one way to disable an expression for a property. I can also limit just the minimum and maximum size of the brush. Let's reset the curve to linear and move the size points inward a bit. This is separate from the size property. Both properties combine to affect the size range of your brushes. This curve is also relative to the brush size you are painting with. For example, the effect of the curve is more pronounced on a large brush stroke because there are more pixels and therefore more potential for size variation. Expressions can also be inverted by reversing the slope. For example, I can invert the size pressure expression by making high pressure the lowest size and low pressure the largest. Now when I press firmly, the line is thinner. I'll reset this curve. While it doesn't make sense with the size property, inverting expressions is sometimes necessary to get the right feel from your brushes. Next, we will look at expressions that can angle dabs, such as tilt and rotation. I'll select a brush that has a long, flat dab. With a large brush, I will dab or click with my mouse to stamp a dab onto the canvas. In the brush editor of your art application, let's locate the angle properties. If I change the angle, the angle of the dab as it is aligned to the stroke changes. You can best see this with some spacing applied. If I add 90 degrees of rotation and stamp another dab on the canvas, you can see the dab shape has been rotated. I'll set the angle back to zero. Angle jitter will jitter the angle randomly for each dab in a stroke. This can really help some types of brushes look less repetitive. A more intuitive way to change the dab angle is to use the pen tilt expression. Usually this setting can be found near the angle property. I'll link tilt to the brush angle. Now, when I tilt my pen and paint strokes, I can change the angle of the dab and the shape of the strokes. I can make wide strokes, thin strokes, and everything in between. Tilt works well enough, but it gets a little uncomfortable having to hold your arm at different angles while painting. Rotation is better because you can rotate the dab by rotating the barrel of your pen. This feels more natural like you're holding a traditional flat brush. The only way to utilize rotation is to get the Wacom Art Pen, which is only compatible with certain tablet models. It's well worth it because rotating a flat brush is fundamental to so many painting techniques. Rotation really is one of the most underrated features in digital art. Unfortunately, not all apps support it. Just look at how versatile flat brushes can be for painting landscapes and other subjects. There's a reason why flat brushes exist in the traditional art world. When setting new or modified brushes to tilt or rotation, you may need to adjust the dab shape angle to align correctly with your pen tip. Tilt and rotation may also be able to control other properties such as opacity or grain if you link them together. If your tablet does not support tilt or rotation, then your art application might be able to rotate the angle of the dab using the direction your cursor is moving. In Rebel, this is called follow trajectory. In other apps, it might be called something else. Art applications that support the tilt expression might also allow you to widen strokes using the tip tilt property. Quite a few apps have a pencil brush you can tilt, for example, the tilted pencil in Krita. When I draw with my pen upright or perpendicular, I get a thin line, but as I begin to tilt my pen, the dab grows taller. It also gets fainter, but there's a different set of properties controlling that. This does an excellent job of simulating the dynamic shape you'd get while drawing with a real pencil. There are many other traditional mediums that change shape when you tilt them, so don't overlook this essential property. If you ever find that a brush is unexpectedly changing shape on you, check to see if tip tilt is enabled and disable it if you like. By increasing the tip tilt properties, the stroke will get wider. You might even be able to set a custom curve for it. And in many cases, you can choose to elongate the dab height and width independently of each other. As you can see, this brush starts out small with low tilt or with the pen upright. And as I tilt the pen, the dab slowly gets taller until near the end of the tilt range where it more rapidly transitions to its widest. The tilt range is clipped on the high end so that I don't have to tilt the pen as far to get the largest size. There may be a property for tilt sensitivity in your tablet control panel as well. I only want to elongate this dab vertically, so I need not edit the width curve. Expressions are essential, but what if you're using a mouse and not a tablet? 
Obviously, pressure and tilt expressions are not going to work with a mouse, but you can simulate their effects by adjusting the various sliders for pen pressure and angle. In Rebel, the pen pressure sliders are hidden by default in the Properties panel, but can be shown for quicker access. These controls allow you to manually set the strength of each expression for use with the mouse input. That about does it for the brush expressions. Don't overlook this feature, because it might be critical to getting the correct look and behavior from your brush.